Okay, so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to talk about the start of the downswing. And I think it's a really important area. Now, in the last video, so I wanted to stay on the same thread. In the last video, I talked a lot about understanding the boundaries of your motion. So how much towards your trail side you can move and how much towards your lead side you can move. But really, I started to talk about some step drills and some momentum shifting ideas to help you sort of, you know, really sort of whip the club through the golf ball. And there's two more areas towards the subject area. This one is about the pelvis in transition, which is that sort of start to the downswing, if you like. And then the last one is the extension. So the kind of upward hitting on the back of the golf ball to again, really help you whip it through. Now, what I like to do when I'm working with golfers is I like to make sure that they understand what they're doing first. So when I'm working with online students in particular, and even face to face, of course, you know, I'm making sure they can do it. So a lot of conscious competence drills. And what I'm always looking for is, what would their trigger be to the downswing? And what I tend to see is the most common thing is golfers go, right, I should start the downswing rotational. And they move like something like this. Now this is kind of what I'd say is spinning out. Spinning out is when that sort of trail hip is firing forward and it's just gonna either throw the hands out or it's gonna cause a complication. So what I'm always doing against that is I'm trying to go, well, okay, as we're sort of swinging up towards the top of the backswing, you want to try and to, to make sure that you don't spin. You want to try and get the feeling that yes, it's rotational, but you want to feel as though maybe the pelvis is moving in a more downward fashion. Okay, so if you kind of, if I sort of put a line, I'm going to put my hands, get my golf club out of the way, put my hands across my shoulders and you just concentrate on my belt line. So I'd sort of say, let's say I swung back to here. So I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. So the way I'm going down. Okay, as I initiate this downswing. So it's kind of both, isn't it? It's kind of like, you can see the way I'm moving to my lead side, as I talked about in the momentum shift, and you can see the way I'm rotating. So it's not like I'm just doing this, but as I'm rotating, it's not this way, and it's not this way, it's, it's downward. And what this does, this really helps you shift the pressure, but it also gives you the right sort of angles. And you think about throwing a ball, it's not this way. It's really, it's sit into that side and then you can get up and use that sort of ground as you've pushed into it, then you can use the ground to extend through. So all I want you to do is just put the club across your shoulders, swing up towards the top of your backswing position. And then as you start the downswing, yes, rotate, but make sure you feel like your pelvis is going downward and you should really increase that awareness of using the ground. And that's all I want you to be aware of in this particular video. It will stop you from spinning out, it will stop you from sliding, because the pelvis goes too up. Stop you from spinning out, not enough linear. Stop you from feeling like you're getting stuck. I know a lot of golfers in transition try and just pull the lead leg back and they get stuck. You know, a lot of golfers look this way, there's no power in it. So you're really trying to sit down and make sure that pelvis is really lowering down. And this is when you get the old sort of sayings of keep your back to the target and hip bump. And that's because it looks like that. It looks like golfers are just doing this, but it is a rotational motion. It's just you're blending rotational and linear motion. And I think the best way to counteract any problems is to make sure you are going downward. Catch up with you guys really soon.